How are you? So, there. Get rid of, get, try and get rid of the mess that is my construction site. Um, we have everything stuffed in my office here while we um, do a few things. My, my, you know, my one son, uh, David, my youngest, is, is going to USC as a freshman here in, in about six weeks. And so, uh, um, so what you do is, is once your children leave, then you remodel the house. Okay? And so that's what we're doing, <laughs> remodeling parts of it. So this is the uh, second lecture of July, the week of July 14th, uh, 2019, Summer of Gerontology 508. And uh, so we're going to continue with our journey of interventions. All the stuff you could put into practice when you guys generate your marketing pamphlet. Um, uh, and this pamphlet is something that, that hopefully you will use uh, professionally, like I said, in, in your own business venture someday. Okay, so what we're going to be doing now is we're going to go into, directly into the readings and quizzes. Now, do we do realize that this is going to be a shorter lecture? I've made this one a little bit short, shorter and sweeter. Um, uh, exercise, of course, there's whole exercise physiology programs. Um, I always, uh, when you look at the what I write here, um, you know, this is an entire course unto itself, okay? An entire um, professional direction unto itself, okay? But that being said, there's some really cool, uh, cool videos, uh, cool articles to be read. I chose two that were um, more meta-analysis that surveyed the literature. Um, this is the link to this one right here. Again, you're going to pick and choose what you can out of this, okay? i give you a few hints here, okay? And this one's really cool because it, it, it compares yoga as a form of exercise to other um, more traditional forms of exercise, okay? So we'll start with this one right here, okay? And, okay, we can get out of here. And, uh, okay, so we're looking at the effects of physical uh, exercise on essential nervous system functions, all right? So this is, again, a meta-analysis. It's a review, okay, done in 2015, okay? And first of all, you take a deep breath, okay? Inhale through your nose, breathe out through your mouth, okay? Uh, this is what you do when you do yoga. This is what you do when uh, you go get ac acupuncture, okay? It's about getting centered, okay? So and just take this stuff in, okay? So, um, again, uh, where is exercise treatment being used? Well, it's a using a, as a treatment for Alzheimer's, depression, Parkinson's disease, any disease, stroke, ALS, okay? Um, and we already talked a little bit about some of the pathologies that you might see with respect to stress, okay? And also these diseases, okay? And uh, Alzheimer's is infamous for what's called sundowner syndrome, all right? So um, when we look at um, the circadian rhythm of cortisol, okay? So remember, you have that burst of cortisol uh, that you guys talked about uh, when you wake up, and this then gets the body into motion in terms of having fuel, all right? Again, just read through this, okay? Okay. Um, so we're looking at how exercise affects all these different brain areas. And then they hone in on, of course, the, the, the hypothalamic pituitary, pituitary axis. They do talk about movement, okay? And they hone in on the part of the brain that is your, um, what's called um, skilled motor learning areas. Um, also, called, it's called auto, automatic movement or automatisms. Um, this is your typing, your tennis game, your driving, things that, that you learn consciously and then goes into a subconscious form of learning and memory. And these are the basal ganglia that are impacted dramatically by Parkinson's disease. In fact, I did um, 10 years of research, and you can look my name up, John Walsh, Giselle Petzinger, Mike Jackwick, USC, we did exercise and, um, and the brain in Parkinson's disease, and we found some amazing benefits in Parkinson's disease. Okay. And I have, a, I have a bunch of papers, probably about 10 papers out there on that. Okay. All right. So, of course, we're always looking to find um, molecular cellular mechanisms because then this gives, allows us to, uh, as a, an area to do potential treatments. Okay. All right. So, it gets in here. We're going to look at um, the, 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 the relationship between exercise and stress. All right. So, um, we know that health can be disrupted by stress. Okay. Both acutely and chronic, okay? It has, as we've talked about in this class, physiological and psychological impacts, okay? Um, 
We know that there are extreme stressors that can lead to PTSD, okay? And there can also be chronic, low-level daily hassles, okay? Um, they all can result in sleep loss, um, what's called comfort eating, okay? Um, uh, again, my, my, my Julia always says, you know, I, I eat because I'm sad and I sad because I eat, okay? And there's a physiology behind that. You're craving carbohydrates to lift your serotonin in your brain, but it's just a big spike, boom! And then it's over, okay? So it just goes boom, boom, okay? Um, and you actually then have lowered serotonin levels, righty? Okay. Um, there is a, a key factor that has been isolated, and we're going to uh, refer this to this later on in a short video we're going to look at by Paul Thompson from USC's uh, Imaging Center. It's called Brain-Derived Neurotrophic Factor. It shows you how it was first isolated. Trophic is something that is a growth factor. Okay, um, hypertrophy, okay, means you have a lot of growth. Okay, so that's just the, the, the root of that word. And so it actually stimulates the nerve cells to produce new antenna, dendrites, um, actually produces new cells in certain areas like the hippocampus that are crucial for learning and memory. Okay, so the, again, this is a meta-analysis, so it's going to go systematically through the literature. Um, we can see our favorite players, okay, again, uh, Alzheimer's disease, um, a disruption of the HPA axis, okay? Um, uh, um, we scroll down here, and then this gets into the um, materials and methods. And a couple of you guys have discussed in your papers um, the PRISMA methods, okay? Uh, again, this is a meta-analysis where you're sifting through, as, you know, you have keywords in your search, and then that allows you to come up with the most relevant articles, okay? All right, so this tells you how they went about the study, and this is just a guideline for you guys if you ever want to. You know, you guys showed me that you could write these kind of papers, and you should go forward and become authors in your area that for you that you find most um, most most uh, stimulating. Okay, um, the work I did was a rodent treadmill exercise. Um, um, when we see right here, um, they're talking about murine. That's a short. It's a scientific word for mouse studies. Okay, and um, in this again, shows you their flow chart of how they did their study, all right? So you just go how they screened, how they excluded. Um, you can see this meta-analysis was significant, okay? And, um, and so they finally get, and they, they whittle it down to 117 being in inclusional. And that's the kind of stuff you have to do, all right? They go through the different brain areas, adapting the exercise. This is our serotonin-secreting brain area, all right? This contains the serotonin neurons. These are the targets of our traditional antidepressant medications like Trintelix, okay, um, like Prozac and things like that, okay, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, okay. Um, this is, again, methodological, okay. So we did force exercise in all of our studies. You can also have a voluntary exercise. All right. All right, so we scroll down through here. They talk about... Um, your circadian rhythm, your 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 sleep wake cycles and exercise. So this, I'm not going to read this article for you, but I just want you to go through it. The locus ceruleus is the one that is our adrenaline neurons in the brain. In the brain, it's called noradrenaline. In the body, it's called adrenaline. Okay. Um, also epinephrine and norepinephrine. All right. And they go through all the different brain areas. So um, uh, a little bit of molecular stuff. Okay. Um, this talks about exercise and food intake. You know? And one thing that they do tap into when we get into Yoda, our, our um, yoga article is that um, you know, in the short term, you get a burst of cortisol when you're exercising because it, it does, intense exercise will tear down the body and, and, the, um, and you need fuel followed by um, uh, repair. And that's what that's all about. Okay. So it gets a little molecular here. We talk about cardiovascular system changes with exercise, okay? All right, which is awesome. Um, and then we get into our friend, the HPA axis adaptation with exercise, okay? Which is key, all right? And it's, um, we looking right here at the glucocorticoid um, uh, a hormone and how they modulate the stress response, okay? And then we get down here to the glucocorticoid receptors, okay? And it explains the whole thing. Then it goes into the adaptation, okay? With Here's the adaptation response to exercise, all right? 
it's really quite an awesome meta-analysis, okay? The basal ganglia, these are the ones that I study, okay? And they, again, are super important for movement because you can look at a disease like Parkinson's disease, um, tremor, and things like that, okay? All righty. Um, and these are just a laundry list of targeted molecular changes that hopefully will result in um, treatment someday. Okay, and that's it. So I'm, I rifled through that article. I want you to do the same. Then we get in here. Okay, I know a lot of you guys are into yoga, and this looks at the health benefits of yoga and exercise. And again, this is a comparison study. And this is, this is an awesome, awesome article. Okay, and it shows you that, that, that yoga as a form of exercise may even be um, better than uh, intense exercise, okay, in terms of modulating our HPA axis and the sympathetic nervous system. So these are all superior findings, okay? All right. So again, this goes in to how they did the analysis. We see a lot right here of stuff that we're familiar with, cortisol, glucose for diabetes, okay? Um, and um, the effects of yoga on these things, okay? We look down here, okay, we've talked a lot about inflammation, okay? Yoga has been found to decrease markers of inflammation, kind of like the, the C-reactive protein measure. When you go to, a, this is standard of care, and you are suspected to have you know, inflammatory disease, that your doctors can run a blood panel for, for CRP or C-reactive pro, pro, protein, okay? It should be below 3, all right? And again, Julia's was 7.5. So it um, shows her how out of control she was, okay? Um, we know that um, over time, okay, hypervigilance, we've heard about this, meaning that you are in a high-stress mode, that, um, that this repeated activation of this can cause dysregulation, uh, leading to diseases such as obesity, autoimmune disorders, on and on and on, substance abuse, okay? All right, cool. So... This shows you how amazing you guys are. Look, you guys recognize stress, okay? You recognize the HPA axis, the sympathetic nervous system, epinephrine, which is adrenaline, norepinephrine, which is noradrenaline, all right? Increases heart rate, um, blood viscosity, clotting, blood pressure, okay? Look at cortisol, okay? We've heard about glucagon. This is uh, affecting your kidneys right here. Look at this, inflammation. Just think where you started just a couple weeks ago, how none of this would make sense. And now you can look at this and go, oh, my God, I understand all of this. This lipidemia, okay, this is because of uh, the effect that uh, cortisol has on um, fats in your body. And we have our HDL and LDL. These are proteins that carry fats around that lead to atherosclerosis. All righty. Um, these are the results. Okay. Again, it was a meta-analysis, and um, and we can look at all the studies that they cited. A comparison of yoga with traditional exercise, intense exercise. Okay. Um, we can. Uh, I'm not going to go reading through all this, but um, again, you look at the different types of of, of, uh, of uh, yoga. This is a more uh, intense exercise-driven ex uh, yoga. Has a lot uh, bigger increase in cardiovascular uh, output, okay, versus this type of yoga, and um, and uh, it's the, the outcomes are pretty significant, pretty significant in terms of what 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 is seen, okay. Um, again, I just want you guys to go through this on your own. Alrighty, um, so uh, so just to review: um, chronic stress leads to food seeking behavior. Uh, including consumption of foods high in sugar and fat, which may eventually lead to obesity. All righty. Um, this talks about the HPA axis, okay, and it talks about the benefits uh, in review of yoga. Now, I do want you guys to understand, I want to have a little disclaimer here, okay. Um, we can put two people side by side, okay. The one person on one side um, does everything right, all right. Um, lowers their stress, has a um, uh, really super good diet, okay, does everything right, but because of who they are genetically, they still might be at risk for diabetes and heart disease, okay, so it's nurture and it's nature, okay, it's a combination of these two, they're inseparable, and when we look at thousands, millions of people, yes, we can make these generalizations, but don't feel 
like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Okay. Um, again, genes are strong. Genes are strong. We're just giving you some suggestions, okay, based on science that you can pass along to your clients and even yourself. All right. We finished this up by looking at this amazing video by uh, Paul Thompson. Now I can open it up here. Forward. And what he talks about is exercise stress. The exercise the is interesting in terms of the effects on the brain because it, it, it works in about four or five different ways. Uh, one of the most obvious ways is blood flow. And so if you uh, get your heart working, your brain's going to be filled with um, oxygen-rich blood and nutrients. So that's the main way that, that we thought it helped. Important to remember, guys, blood flow is key. And in our studies, we found that those areas that help uh, improve movement in, in, um, in per people with Parkinson's disease, the blood flow directly went to that movement area. The other way that's so interesting uh, is it's been thought that exercise produces uh, new neurons. And so exercise induces the production of growth factors, one, one's called BDNF, and it actually stimulates the production of new brain cells. BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, right? So it stimulates the growth of nerve cells. Now, when I was in school 20 years ago, we were told you can't get any new brain cells. So All when right. you're born, that's your lot. You know, you're not going to make any more. So I'm going to jump to this. Your cortisol levels can be very high. But one of the things we found is that the people with high uh, cortisol levels lost brain tissue faster. Well, that's a serious problem. So as soon as people with high cortisol levels lost brain tissue fa faster, which brain areas, guys, did we lose brain tissue in? Oh, see over there? Jillian Miller raises her hand. Okay. And she told me, okay, my frontal cortex, which is my decision maker that overrides my stress response, loses neurons, and so it cannot override the stress response. And what? The hippocampus. That's right, Jillian. And the hippocampus is the one that is our learning and memory site. So, so you get what's called um, stress-related dementia. Okay? So these are, again, temporary. They can be reversed, but it's kind of amazing stuff. All right. Anyway, so you can see how this is really cool and right up our alley. All right, I'm going to get out of here. We're going to get back in here. Okay, so that's the background. Again, this is not as 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 much information as I could have put in, but I think it's appropriate. We go in here to the discussion. I'm going to scroll down here, and we're going to find um, our section on exercise okay all right so pretty straightforward we know the significance of exercise exercise and news activity in the rafe what was the rafe serotonin okay. what is serotonin that's our affect a feeling like we belong okay it's the target of antidepressant drugs locus cerealis this is our level of arousal it is our noradrenaline in the brain okay it's what gives us a big lift okay um what about this? The HPA axis, okay? All right, we've heard about that. Basal ganglia, these are the automatic movements to skilled learning, okay? Your typing, your tennis game, things like that. My surfing, all right? All right, then we talk about yoga, all right? All right, um, and then think about Paul Thompson's video and what do you think the most important message was, all right? So that is it, my friends. How awesome is this? You can now uh, take this information and like I said, apply it to your corporate pamphlet. You guys are going to present this to um, clients someday, or maybe um, within the corporation, you've been assigned this job, and you're going to show this, and, and, and your supervisor is going to go, this stuff is genius. All right, so um, I wish you well on this, and we will see you next time.